Hello, Justin here from Tin Man Electronics. BAM! Today I'd like to talk about soldering with lead-free solder. If any of you watched my video about the Elenco power supply that I built, I got some lead-free solder in it. And I said I was going to throw it out into the garbage, but in reality I kept it because I never actually used lead-free solder. So I think today I'm going to pop that cherry and I'm going to solder with the lead-free solder. I'm going to make one the same circuit I'm gonna solder it onto the same little uh, actually I got it right back here I'm gonna solder it onto this pad per hole uh, proto board so I'm just gonna solder two of the same circuit one I will do with leaded solder the stuff that I've always been using and the other circuit I will do with lead free solder which will be my first time so uh, let's talk about that hey I'm all set up for soldering. I'm going to start soldering with the leaded stuff like I've always been using. It's going to set my base point so that when I move on to the lead free solder on the, the same circuit, uh, I'm going to realize the difference is a little more. So uh, let's start with that. The lead free solder is right here. You're going to see this in action later. So I just finished soldering up the first circuit with the leaded solder and uh, I'm all around pleased with the performance of the solder and melts easily. It ad adheres to uh, the, the contacts very easily. It's just straight up soldering like no, no worries about uh, flux or anything because there's flux inside the core. So uh, I think I'm going to move on to the uh, lead free solder. and. Uh, We'll see how that works out. So for the lead free solder, I have to boost the temperature of my soldering iron because it, uh, like I mentioned earlier, just the properties of the tin copper alloy without the lead makes it so that the melting melting point is a little higher. So uh, bam. I'm going to wrap this up right now. So I soldered both circuits or the, the same circuit twice, right? And the similar similar look, but I'm, I'm just going to touch on the differences that I've noticed across leaded and lead free solder. You could probably see that's a 7805. And uh, yeah, you guys are going to see this another time, but let's look at the backside. I'm going to take some pictures of this so you can kind of follow along, but uh, as I was putting on the lead free solder I found it was stickier like it did not um, it did not reflow as easily I had to bump up the temperature up to like 760 degrees Fahrenheit and even then it was still sticking like I would apply I would apply my iron to it and uh, it, it would just not melt it would it would take like a split second before it would go you know it start melting right onto the iron or uh, tinning the, uh, the the tip and then I put it onto the circuit and it would take longer for it to melt onto the circuit as well so it was a little tougher to work with in that case in that sense but it was it was manageable so it's it's not that bad in that respect um, like I said it's not very good at reflowing so when I take the pictures and when you check these out you're gonna notice uh, the the soldering joints aren't as shiny on the lead free side and it's it's not because they're cold joints it's just that's how they appear it's 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 a little bulkier because it doesn't reflow as well there it's just not as a cleaner of a look but they're pretty similar anyways hopefully you'll uh, you'll see what I see um, it's not good for the tip okay straight up as I started going and I, I kept soldering on and kept soldering on I realized I was starting to build up a lot of excess lead-free solder on my tip 
and it was I mean it, it wasn't a big deal but usually with leaded solder when I'm when I'm putting the stuff onto the tip it kind of reflows all around it and cleans it up so if there's solder on the other side the opposite side that I'm applying to if I apply to this side it's just gonna reflow around here let me get the pencil for that it's gonna reflow around and clean up the whole tip if I've got the lead free solder and put it onto this side the stuff on the other side is not gonna reflow back to the front it, so it, it's you slowly accumulate a, like a deposit on one side and uh, I'm sure that's not good for the tip I read online that lead free solder is supposed to be used with lead free uh, tips the uh, soldering iron tips and uh, that was not the case I just used this tip so whatever kill the life a bit but it's for your um, knowledge and for mine as well so I've used lead free solder now it's not too bad but I'd rather use the leaded stuff it uh, it takes a little longer to cool so it, it kind of adds to the non reflowability and how these joints look a little a little paler it's it just it takes a little longer to cool you, you don't want to disturb it in that period or it's going to uh, produce a cold joint but yeah uh, longer to cool it's not it's not like I'm not saying it's super long but I mean it's it might be like a split second to a second longer so uh, keep that in mind I hope you benefit from this video and learned a bit about lead free solder you should maybe try it out yourself if you haven't but like I said I prefer the lead the leaded solder and uh, like this was the board we made today um, you guys are going to see this on a future episode, so if you want to see this board in action, stay tuned. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my website, www.tinmanelectronics.com. I am your host, Justin, from Tin Man Electronics. That's engineering. Bam! We figure shit out. And then we test it. And we solder it together. And then your mama... She comes see my projects and she likes them. Mm.